Hello everyone and welcome back to Dauntless. Um, I'm hoping this recording goes better than the last one that I just tried to do because the frame rate on that one was horrendous. I can't, or honestly can't tell if the game just has it because, or if it has issues being recorded because I get like 15 frames at peak most of the time. But if it keeps up, we're just gonna keep trying. I apologize if anyone gets terrible motion sickness. Um, but anyway, today we're going to be get trying out the dual chain blades. And we're going to be continuing with the main quest because I don't seem to be able to craft armor and weapons out of the behemoths until I get to a certain point in the story. So... Since that's what our course of action is going to be, we are going to be hunting an ember main. However, uh, yeah, I'll take the chain blades. <clears throat> I tried them out earlier. I don't like their damage output. They're fast, but I just like to be, I like to hit decently hard. Private hunt, because we hunt alone. I have been known to hunt with other people, but typically only my friends in Monster Hunter. And I t it's mostly just out of whim more than necessity. Oh my gosh, we hit 30 frames per second while the loading screen is up. So this is my first time hunting the Ember Main, but um, hopefully it won't take as long to hunt down as the Rogue Shrike did. We currently are getting a nice steady 17 frames per second, nope, 13, 12. Good stuff. We are going to go to where we always find the Rogue Shrike first, because I... One thing Monster Hunter definitely has over this is the minimap. It's actually easy to figure out where I'm going, figure out where I've been. The terrain in this place is exceptionally similar to everything, so it's easy to lose track of where I have been and where I have not. And areas are not as defined, so it's harder to know exactly where a monster, a behemoth spawns every time. But luckily, we have found our target rather quickly. Let's see if, like the Shrike, he's immediately hostile towards us. Yep, he sure is. This one's a quick one. Okay then, you're gonna be harder to dodge. Should be careful using those since they use it to my scan that I'm definitely going to need here. He just doesn't seem very likely to keep me, let me get close. Oh, I see, he tuckers himself out every now and then. Well then, that's a pretty nice opening, and an obvious one to say the least. Seems like most behemoths go to places that have Aether events. Ooh, didn't expect that one. Nicely done. 
Your health potions seem to recharge back up to 5 after every hunt. Your other potions that you bring along, however, are limited in number and must be remade. As far as I can tell. Come on, big boy, let's play. How did you hit me? Okay, unlike Monster Hunter, this version of Demon Dodge does not give you extra protection. That's the space broken. Gosh, that's actually pretty difficult to avoid. It's almost like too difficult. I'm sure I'll get used to it. I gotta dodge slightly towards him when he does that, or not. Sideways it is. Oh, there is a frickin' lock on its R. Wish the game would have told me that at some point. If it did, well, I look stupid, don't I? What? What? Why did they just fall over? Right, that's the back pedal. Monster Hunter the Insect Glaive has very similar attacks, but they're also damage in the process. Whee! Might, these weapons might actually be a good one to use the stamina potion on. actually giving me a bit of trouble. I think it might be the weapon that I've chosen, though. These don't seem to suit me very well. Also, if I dodge earlier, that attack's really easy to avoid. And unless he doesn't go very far away. It does have give you a massive opening to do stuff, though. There we go, I knew that I could do that. He seems a bit little upset that I just broke part of his body off. I kinda wish that, that was on E. I don't actually think he does anything. Did I cut that tree down? Yeah, I sure did. He's uh, just sliding backwards now. Oh, that's because the game seems to be having issues, because I can't attack sometimes, and I'm not doing damage. What? Oh, that doesn't focus, R doesn't focus on the monster, it just reorients your camera, it seems. Maybe it does if they're close, I don't know how it works. Monster Hunter gives you a lock-on symbol on the monster whenever it does it. Anytime he backs away like that, he's going to come back in for another strike. Let's use this Aether Vent while we have the chance. Let's get greedy and do it again, because I'm stupid. Oh, 
Okay, looks like you can still do wide strikes even if you run out of stamina. You'll just continue to have no stamina. Starting to get the hang of it. Is there something I can do with this tail? In Monster Hunter, you can car you actually carve the monster, unless it doesn't seem to be necessary. Taunt, swipe. Loop. <coughs> Run off, charge and swipe. Ah, close range charge in. <coughs> he seems to taunt whenever he regains his energy. He's down. He never even tried to run away. I like that in a monster. Yep, oh, lost control of my character. That one was more enjoyable than the strike. I'll give it a four. Depending on how difficult these behemoths get, I may or may not be open to matchmaking, but re presently they don't seem like too big a challenge. I can beat one in about 10 minutes on my own. I don't know if they increase in difficulty with more hunters like they do in Monster Hunter. But even Monster Hunter doesn't make it that more difficult. Let's see if we finally get the authorization to make weapons and armor. Or if we have to kill, like, another monster or two. Um, if I mistakenly call Ramsgate Astera, that's because that's the hub world in Monster Hunter World. Sounds like it was quite a hunt. I've already jokingly called it, but I just caught myself from saying it just then. Hurry up. A Nasher? Hey, we've fought a Nasher before, so we'll finally be able to make weapons and armor out of something. <clears throat> oh, we're going to new place. This must be Ramsgate here. Uh, strangely on a compass-shaped island. Time you were going. Let's see, are there any more quests here according Some to the compass? Really do nope. We're going to swap back to the hammer. I just like it more. We'll find out if I like something more when we unlock the axes and the war pikes, but presently, I like the hammer. Now, we need to make some more potions. How do I craft? Is there a pay for currency in this? Yes. I hate it when games have that. Did I make it in loadout? <laughs> oh, 
I wonder if I have to talk to someone to, love, to make potions. Is it you, my friend? Hey there, yes, it is. I need some frenzy tonics. <clears throat> oh, need more sky bloom, it seems. The Nasher, if my memory serves me correctly, was the monster that we fought in the tutorial. I get the feeling that one was in a weakened state. So let's see how we fare against it when it's not. So, how about that local sports team? Oh good, I don't have to get, I don't have to bust out more small talk jokes for loading screens. Cause I'm not very good at it. In Monster Hunter, I typically roll with Sword and Shield because of its speed, defensive capabilities, and utility. Uh, however, I do occasionally, when I want... There's two types of damage in Monster Hunter, which are slashing damage, which most, or what most weapons deal. And then there's blunt damage, which only a hand, which only two weapons do. But other weapons have various attacks that... Various singular attacks in parts of their combos that deal blunt damage and blunt damage is used to exhaust a monster when you hit it in the head and it also when you put when you perform enough blunt damage within a time frame to the monster's head in monster hunter it knocks them out leaving them completely vulnerable to attacks for a certain duration <coughs> This game seems to only daze the monster. It seems more like a blinding effect than um, actually stunning them. They seem, they're fully capable of moving around and attacking, but they just seem to do it a little less frequently and with less direction. I ha I'm not 100% certain. I haven't observed enough of that effect yet. Uh, Lantern, time to prove yourself, because you've failed me several times. It's that way? Okay, then. Either I don't know how to use this thing, or it doesn't work very well. We're about to find out. Looks like there's a bit of shallow water up ahead. We need to keep an eye out for Aether Vents. Those are so far a surefire indicator that that is a monster arena. Up oh, there he is. Hello, big boy. Let's dance. He does seem inclined to dance. Whenever I want blunt damage, I usually go with the hammer in Monster Hunter. It's actually a lot quicker weapon than you'd expect. This weapon does this. The weapon in this game is very similar, but it doesn't have gun components. That makes the gun. That makes the hammer more similar to a gun lance. I might redo some key bindings. Probably hold back and observe his combos for more. It's the safest thing to do whenever you're facing a monster you're not familiar with in this or any monster hunter like game. Getting in there is not always a bad idea either because you learn how hard attacks from the monster hit. 
Now, I thought that left him vulnerable, but it actually does not. Because he turned opposite. Uh, also, I keep reloading so spastically whenever I have. When I've only used one shot, because I tend to. I nervous reload. Well, that was annoying. I wish that it, the attack would continue to be in the direction that my hunter is looking, rather than the direction that I'm looking with the camera. The other thing, the only, the other reason why I keep reloading whenever I've only taken one shot is because it's just more advantageous. advantageous to reload when you have an opening so you have as many attacks as you want as you can when another opening appears. There's different types of opening in Monster Hunter titles like this. There's evasive openings and then there's attack. Oh so that's how that works. I imagine you can probably cut this sucker's tail off if you had a slashing weapon. If I can cut it off with this, well then. The other reason why I reloaded the first chance that I get is because I can do this. Or not. There we go. Shiny, huh? So there are shinies in this game. Shinies are random drops off of a monster and monster hunter. They sparkle on the ground. Thus, shiny. Okay, time to heal. Good practice in any game like this is to only heal when your potion is going to be effective. So I could heat I could drink another potion right now and get up to full, but it's more than the potion is capable of healing. So I should wait until I've taken damage. Taken more damage so that the potion have its full effect because I have limited resources so I want to be efficient with them.
his glowing scales are an indicator of how much health he has left. He doesn't have that much, because they keep fading. Oh, he's running away. Well, in that case, let's use the Aether Vent to heal ourselves. This we can use to heal to full because, to my knowledge, it has no limit. Now, unfortunately, because he burrowed away, we have no way of knowing exactly where he went. And in this situation, having other hunters would be useful because you could split up to find the monster. Now, in Monster Hunter, I would have put on the monster. I would have put on the Nasher what is referred to as a paintball, at least before Monster Hunter World. And paintballs keep the monster marked on your mini-map and your full-size map at all times. So, if it, if it burrowed or flew away and I wasn't able to keep track of exactly which direction it went, I would know exactly where to go. And I don't really trust this lantern very, this lantern power very much. It's supposed to direct you towards the monster. I think I'll just give up calling them behemoths. I know that's what the game calls them, but I'm just so accustomed to saying monster at this point. The recruit's lantern is supposed to guide you in the direction of the monster, but my practices with it lead me to not believe it. other part that I don't believe it for is that I can't use it very often. I can use it more frequently if I collect little speed boost wisps and if I attack a monster. But ultimately one use per every time the monster runs away is not brilliant in my opinion. There is a quick reload mechanic, but I like the full reload better. Have I broken its face yet? I don't think I have. It still has pretty teeth in that. Reloading while moving has no detriments either, except for the fact that I don't think you can dodge. It is typically not wise to risk picking up shinies when you are right in front of a monster. Monsters in this game don't run away as frequently as they do in Monster Hunter. At least I don't have to worry about carving its tail. sound painful, which is why I say ow every time I do it. Also, it pains me to be so inefficient. Oh, looks like someone's entered an enraged state. Ow, didn't realize that was an attack. As if to say he didn't have enough... He didn't have few enough openings before. Now he's faster, stronger, and does more combos. He 
seems to be exhausted to a certain extent, though. Oh, we can only help keep that up for a minute. Knowledge, there's no mounting in this game. Can't have much left in it. I could demonstrate proper monster hunter to you guys. I would not look as scrubby. Sword and shield in hand. I'm still getting used to all the still getting used to the nuances of all the weapons in this. Because although they are very similar to Monster Hunter weapons, they all have their different functions. Down he goes. Yeah, if I could show you guys proper Monster Hunter. Not Monster Hunter World either, even though Monster Hunter World is good. Uh, you'd see something special. Ramsgate really, uh, really fell to nature from the look of it. Uh, Dauntless? Okay, there we go. <laughs> I don't know why it does that. Returning to Ramsgate in 3, 2, 1, and then we're back in the hunt. I think it's probably a little quirk. This game is in open beta presently, so there are bugs. Yesterday... Matchmaking was completely um, busted. You couldn't get into any hunts, even if you were pri even if it was private. I tried to record then, but I was not able to do so. <clears throat> Seems that we've now unlocked the ability to make armor and weapons. I wish I could make some out of the Ember Main and the Shrike. I'd like to see what they look like, but we seem to have to get.
We seem to have to get the schematics for them. In Monster Hunter, you just get enough of the requisite parts and it will put the um, blueprints in the blacksmith. There's also only one place for weapons and armor. Now, before we end the video, let's go and retrieve our schematics. Prove your worth. Reputation tracks allow you to build your prestige with factions and NPCs by completing daily and weekly challenges. For the Slayer track, you must defeat behemoths, often under specific conditions, to earn trust and admiration of Cat and Slayer's Council. As you increase your reputation level on each track, you'll unlock a variety of rewards, including powerful cells you can use to upgrade your gear. Track your reputation at tracks in the journal. Ready for a Shadow challenge. of the Strike. Oh, good. I'll accept this because I need to do it. But I will put that in a different video. <laughs> Let's go check out real quick what this armor and weapons is. Just looks like. a moment, Slayer. Welcome, welcome. You want work, yes? Of course. Do I have enough to make this? Yes. Yes, I do. I'll take it. It looks like a blunderbuss mixed with a drum. You're the pride of Ramsgate. Thank you for your patronage. <clears throat> Let's equip this sucker. This will really stand up to some punishment. What do you say, Slayer? We can't make any of the Nasher set yet. Because we don't have enough hide. But we have plenty of notes. Apparently all we need is one hide per piece of armor. Which is fairly interesting. That's pretty cheap. There are armor skills, which are apparently also present on the weapons, similar to Monster Hunter. This one gives plus 50 health for the up, for the head and chest, and plus one Rage Hunter, which I would assume stacks. Get them before they get you. Anyway, that's going to call it for today's video. Um, if you enjoyed this content and you'd like me and you'd like to encourage me to do more you can leave a like if you have any advice for me towards the game or youtubing in general feel free to leave a comment and if you would definitely like to see more of my content in general you can feel free to subscribe and ultimately i will hopefully see you all in the next video goodbye